Peace be with you. I have a spiritual reflection today that I hope can open your eyes to the revelation that I had over the years. I'm sure many of you have watched or read books that were about the apocalypse or the eschaton, the end times. They are replete with entertaining scenarios from nuclear dystopias, zombies, pandemics, aliens, monsters. But what I have noticed watching and reading all these sagas is that they're all the same. They feed on ideas of annihilationism, portraying a world of fear and chaos. As a Christian, I felt a little dejected by these narratives. Friends, net lot popular culture deteriorate our future hope. The end of the world is the beginning of a renewed world, not the destruction. What do I mean? The final book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, is a non-violent critique of our violence, blocking restoration for humanity and creation. This totally reverses ideas of modern forms of neo-apocalypticism, ideas that talk about Christians being taken away into heaven while God destroys the wicked, left behind in a seven-year tribulation. These ideas that I just described to you, by the way, became the plot of a best-selling Christian sci-fi book series, if you didn't know. Fortunately, we're not talking about fiction, but genuine hope in what God has done, is doing, and will do. Traditional Catholic teaching teaches of creation and eschatology, pointing to a holistic redemption of the church, humanity, and all of creation. I will refer you today to a significant scripture, Romans 8. This is where Paul characterizes of the world as enslaved, groaning for the rebirth of humanity, that is, the resurrection and Christ returns. Generally, there have been two ways to look at the end times. The, the first is the orthodox and Catholic view that hopes in the holistic redemption of creation on both the personal and the cosmic levels. The second view is about the annihilation of the physical world stemming from the text 2 Peter 3, 10. And I'll quote here, the day of the Lord will come as a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Sounds like annihilation, does it? But God's fire is a purifying fire, which only destroys the elements. You catch this? The heavens and the elements are burnt. This has been mistakenly interpreted as material physical elements of the earth. But more accurately, it is an idiom that speaks of spiritual, evil spiritual beings in the skies that are being stripped away, not the earth itself. So really, eschatology is about hope for creation's freedom from spiritual evil. Another way that helps us to understand our future hope is revealed through the connections between Genesis 1 and 2 and Revelation 20 to 22. As a consequence of the fall, Adam and Eve were brought out of the garden. But the multi-ethnic inhabitants of New Jerusalem, instead of going to heaven, heaven in the form of a garden city comes down to them. The culmination of history results in a perfect garden city, but it is more than just paradise regained. It is the harmony of human civilization and God's natural world where our true human selves, stewarding creation, rule it well as laid out in Genesis 1. Here's something really interesting. We go through Revelation's last chapters and notice how many times Eden is echoed throughout it. You'll be surprised. There is the river of life from the city, the tree of life yielding its fruit for the healing of the world. The dimensions of the city mimic the dimension of the holy place in the temple designed to physically resemble Eden. There is also the absence of the sea and the celestial bodies, a metaphor for the dissolution of chaos and nothingness and rebellious gods. This is new creation. The end does not just envision a return to paradise, but it's just a completion of the Edenic vision set forth in the beginning. John of Patmos presents the true potential of human civilization in Christ, the unity 
of heaven and earth. This is what the eschaton is all about. The end is the flourishing of humans on a redeemed earth, not snatched away into another spiritual realm. This grounded, sustainable city is an image of our hope. Self-destruction only belongs to those who destroy the earth. Once the rebels are destroyed, God's love floods the universe designed to embrace that love because creation has been freed and rescued from death, promised by the salvation of resurrection. Furthermore, Revelation promises that the victorious will eat of the tree of life, not be harmed by the second death, and wear white garments to cover their shameful nakedness. These eschatological promises to the seven churches does not just resolve the crisis of the Garden of Eden, but it is a new Sabbath, the seventh day, linking the divine rest and completed peace of God and his humans in relationship and dwelling in new creation. Now, this sensible holistic eschatology gives us a mission. Unlike neo-apocalypticism, the Bible is not an escapist ticket to heaven, but it is giving us hope that God will heal all things and we're invited to contribute to this mission. God loves the natural world and all its creatures are good, containing intrinsic value. The end of the world will only come to the self-destructive satanic empires ruled by the evil powers. The elements which shall melt, but even out of those ashes, new life will bud forth. In our modern world, we have reached a point where the ecological crisis has become a hyper object, something so vast that it impacts our planet with long-term consequences that we as humans have nothing in our power to stop it now that it's happening. This encapsulates the terrible cosmic reality of Romans 8, of creation in violent pain, awaiting justice in the resurrection of humanity. Even Pope Francis stresses of the unsustainable modern world, reproving our apathy to convert our minds and hearts to see that nature sings of an infinite love. If we resist our apathy to, this, to the violence towards creation, our future can be filled by filled with hope and by trusting that God will restore our planet in the end. Catholic social teaching also teaches and suggests our need to protect people and heal the planet, living our, living our faith in relationship with God and all of God's creation. I'm not saying that we should strive to do work for God, Rather, we strive to work with God as stewards. The key to Catholic social teaching is relationship. What, what other way can the new creation be vision be fulfilled? I tell you, friends, Revelation warns us that God will destroy those who destroyed the earth. Their punishment will fit their crime. We must repent from our apathy towards environmental exploitation and our pre-tribulation rapture attitudes. As the fruit of living in the new creation vision, stewardship for the environment is axiomatic. Human beings, as in Genesis 1, they're the image of God, given the responsibility and power to care for creation, continuing God's creative work of grace. Adam has to work and keep the garden. The Hebrew words for work are dova, and to keep, shama, are priestly verbs used, used in, from, for guarding the tabernacle. This reveals that the world is a sacred space for humans, implying that God seeks to dwell with us in this world. But brothers and sisters, let's be honest, we had failed miserably as priests. But if we let the Holy Spirit lead us, we have a mission. Jesus is King. He will return someday. The Eschaton gives us hope that this world will, is not a failed experiment. God called it very good. His purpose for creation was vindicated by Christ's physical bodily resurrection. It gives us a taste of what's to come. Our bodies too will be raised so that we can experience life eternal on this planet, free and restored to all its intended glory. This should encourage us to do 
more to nourish our home and our communities, the place God has blessed. There is no cataclysm. That has already happened at the flood, and God promised to never do it again in Genesis 9. There is no rupture of the saints into heaven to evade tribulation. Our decisions today are based on what we hope for in the future. Our Lord's delight is to bring new life and hope to all. May we endure to the end. God bless.